Fontainebleau's. The Eye de Fontainebleau's. The Eye de Fontainebleau's and Company. The Eye de Fontainebleau's Company welcomes you today. The Eye de Fontainebleau's Company simply wants to say there's a wonderful world of chemistry. Anywhere you wander, thousands of sights, all pure delight. Stretching from here, clear to yonder. The Eye de Fontainebleau's Company acting as your host. The Eye de Fontainebleau's Company wishes you the most. The dancing hour that there could be. Where imagination is fancy free. In the wonderful world of chemistry. Beginning now. Beginning at the beginning. Now. When the world was new and the fire had subsided, when the waters had receded and the earth was green, man appeared. We don't know how long it was before he realized that it was better to be warm than cold and better to be dry than wet. But because he wanted something to fill a need, he thought about it, he experimented, and finally he found the answer. On the day that the first man came in out of the rain, research was born. No, oh, thanks a lot. And now chemistry took somewhat longer to arrive. The ancient Greeks liked to sit around and think what everything was made of. Some said everything was water. Some said air. Others, fire, and still others, earth. It was the Greeks thought a lot, but they never experimented. Then in the Middle Ages, alchemists began trying to turn lead into gold. Oh, they tried every formula they could think of to do it. A two, four, uh -huh. and one, yeah. Unfortunately, nothing seemed to work. No matter what they tried, it never came out gold. Oh. Well, is it gold? Peanut brittle. <laughs> Take three frogs. Yes, well, the alchemists experimented, all right, but they never seemed to think. Then in the 18th century, Antoine Lavoisier discovered the formula for water named the elements and turned chaos into science as he both thought and experimented. But in the middle of his work, Lavoisier was caught up in the terror of the French Revolution and in 1794, he was put to death. But Lavoisier left an apprentice, a young man named E.I. Dupont. Leaving France, he came to Delaware and established a small powder mill on the banks of the Brandywine. For today, the company that he began is still serving America, dedicated to bringing all of us better things for better living through chemistry. Now, what has chemical research brought us? Well, some of you may recall when nylon stockings first came on the market. Hello there, Mrs. Weston. Uh, do you remember that? Oh, yes, I remember. <laughs> you know, they were introduced at the 1939 New York World's Fair, 26 years ago. <laughs> of course, I was just a child. Oh, yes, of course. Well, today there's nylon and everything from fabrics to rifles. Rifles? Nylon rifles? Certainly. The entire stock of this handsome rifle is made of nylon. How about that, huh? And to think we first saw it right here that many years ago. That's right. Happy birthday, Nana. Oh, Mrs. Weston, it's beautiful. Would you blow out the candles? Oh, I'll get it. But what did you want make before, Nana? I can't seem to recall. Well, uh, lots of things. Um, uh, take industrial explosives, which helped in clearing the frontier, creating America's railroads and highways, even in carving Mount Rushmore. 
You know, chemistry has always done things with a bang. Take four frogs. If at first you don't succeed. Well, did you know that cars once came in only three colors? You had to take black, the blue, green, or else. But research gave cars more colors than the rainbow. Right on up to Lucite Lacquer. And research took the knock out of those automobile engines, too. Why, well, can even make a car that's a dog look beautiful. Because research produced those famous number seven specialties. Now, who did all this research? Oh, no, not him. No. 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 Oh, come on. DuPont. Without DuPont research, your car leaves something to be desired, right? <laughs> Mrs. Weston, do you remember what the world was like before cellophane? Haven't we always had cellophane? No, not always. Now, close your eyes and visualize an unsanitary grocery store in 1950. Good morning, Mr. Fellow. Good morning, Mrs. Avery. Uh, what would it be this morning, ma'am? I think I'll begin with some spinach, please. Spinach. Mm -hmm. And some cheese. Cheese? Mm -hmm. About a quarter of a pound? Why not? And some of your delicious ginger snacks. Got them right here? <laughs> oh, <laughs> come on, tiger. <laughs> Love those snaps. <laughs> Foods are good. They do have an unusual flavor. Now, how about some sauerkraut? Sauerkraut. Sauerkraut. Oh, how'd that get in there? And one beautiful chicken. Uh, one chicken. There it is. Lovely. That's all. How much, please? Well, it's, that'll be uh, 80 cents even. Well, have Johnny drop them by, will you? Oh, sure thing, Miss Avery. Uh, bye. Goodbye, Mr. Goodfellow. Honestly, at these prices, I... Oh, if somebody would only invent moisture-proof cellophane and make possible something called a, a supermarket, things would certainly be different. They've got to be. And now the time is 1965. Spinach. Spinach. Cheese. Cheese. Ginger snaps. Ginger snaps. Sauerkraut. Sauerkraut. And chicken. Chicken. There you are, Mrs. Avery. Oh, what's that? Yes, there they are. Very same foods, only this time about $8. Some of them wrapped in moisture-proof cellophane, some in other films, but all of them products of chemical research. Have Johnny drop it by, will you? Sure thing. So long. He gave me that cat last week. <laughs> Now let's discuss it. Uh oh, Mrs. Weston, I'm sorry. I forgot about you over there. You can open your eyes now. Yeah, I said I was sorry. That's better. Hey. Yes. Now what are we going to do? Well, let's discuss one of the simplest things in the world. My husband. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Weston, no. Molecules. Oh, yes. I was just going to say, why don't we discuss that? <laughs> And I'm going to sit down while we do. All right, we'll see you later. Everything in the world, you know, is made up of molecules. And some of the most useful are those that form versatile plastics, like Alathon, Delrin, Lucite, Teflon. Here's what we mean. Oh, my. Molecules. There are plastics in your toaster, in the blender and the clock, in the lamp and in the roaster, on the door and in the lock. In the washer and the dryer, and the garden tools you lend. In your music amplifier and electric fryer, you have got a plastic friend. We can coat a waffle griddle, so the waffle never sticks. Be the strings upon your fiddle, even be your fiddle sticks. Be the bristle on your toothbrush. And the teeth upon your comb. In the bottle made for squeezing, or a tray for freezing. With the plastic, you're at home. In your engine and your chassis. And the body of your car. From your potter and your brassy. To your shower, there we are. 
In your phone and in your freezer. In your television, too. Cables, meters, and connections. These are just selections. Batteries and zippers. These are just a few. Cameras and skylights. These are merely highlights. In the world of plastic, all of us were made for. One we wouldn't trade for. All of us were made for you. What do you put in a mixture to make molecules like those? Got any ideas, Professor? Five wrong? Have you got rocks in your head? I thought so. <laughs> but plastics aren't the only things that chemical research has created. For example, this valve clean. To fill the need for machine dry cleaning. Easy to do. Clothes have brighter colors, too, with valve clean's gentle care. T-Rex. To fill the need for an antifreeze that can't be beat. If your garage does not have wheat, time for Xerox there. Seatbelt, to fill the need for a battery. I'm changing this one. Well, Mrs. Weston, all right, now be careful. Zipel. Good. To fill the need for a fabric finish to repel those stakes that seem to come hell-bell. It would clean without a trace if you got a pie right in the face. Well, Mrs. Weston. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Coconut cream. Good, good. Savalox, to fill the need for dyes that last in no fast in colors that are unsurpassed. Savalox says flair. Hypalon, to fill the need for handsome floors so hard to stain for soles and heels that'll wear it plain. That Hypalon, whoop, don't step on the cigarette. <gasps> Ooh, that's smart. Freon. <laughs> To fill One the moment, please. Uh oh, you're back again. All cleaned up, I see. Yes. Well? We want to play our free on serenade. <laughs> Come on, girls. But Mrs. Weston and girls, uh, free on is a propellant that makes aerosol cans work, like hairspray. Oh, you know. Of course we know. Well, all right. And we put whistles on. Oh. Listen. Whistle. One, two, three. And goodbye. <laughs> All oh, these products are from DuPont. DuPont, 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 DuPont. But there's a want of there's a oh, oh go ahead. We'll it. Yes. <laughs> you know, I was supposed to do that. <laughs> that was fun. Oh, yes. Let's do it again. Yes. All these products are from DuPont. <laughs> oh, DuPont Mrs. Weston. DuPont, Mrs. DuPont, Weston. DuPont, DuPont. <laughs> now you've had your turn. Oh, it's time now to see something beautiful. Oh, what's that? <gasps> Fashion. Oh. Did he say fashion? <laughs> fashion. We wouldn't miss it. Not for a minute. Come on, girl. Alice, the other way? What are we going to do with her? <laughs> <laughs>
Berg's jacket is a Dacron blend over a swimsuit of Antron. <laughs> There's Sheila Sullivan wearing a suit of Orlon, a blouse of Dacron. His blazer, slacks, and shirt all by John White, all with Dacron. Summer, John White's presents a dress entirely in Dacron. The Seal Chapman designs include 100% Dacron, too. Her suit is Dacron, her blouse nylon. David Carter wears a suit containing both Dacron and Lycra. hand of David Kidd of Arthur Jablow. On the left, a coat of nylon over a dress of Orlon. On the right, a jacket dress with Antron. Her skating outfit with nylon. And for him, John White creates a ski jacket in Orlon over trousers with nylon. For glamorous evenings, a collection of gowns from all five of our noted designers. From David Kidd of Arthur Jablow, Ruby Nylon Velvet. From Oleg Cassini, Diamond Nylon Brocade. From Seal Chapman, Emerald Nylon Velvet. of chemistry has no end. In this wonderful world today, we stand on the edge of discoveries marvelous and hard to imagine. 300 years ago, when Sir Isaac Newton lay dying, very old and very famous, he said something to be remembered forever. These were his words. I do not know what I may appear to the world, 
but to myself I seem to have been only like a boy, playing on the seashore, diverting myself now and then, finding a smoother pebble or a prettier shell than ordinary, while the great ocean of truth lay all undiscovered before. Well, that great uncharted sea still lies before us, even though we have created wonders that Newton could not have dreamed of. Today, for example, through X-ray motion pictures, we can look into the innermost secrets of life itself. And if we want to observe the flight of a hummingbird, such as this one, we can take pictures so quickly that this entire sequence actually lasted only one-fifth of one second when photographed. Now, our speed is 2,500 pictures per second. But today we have a film that enables us to take 10 million pictures every second. How can we answer now when asked, what will tomorrow bring? Mm -hmm. Oh, Professor, well, one thing tomorrow will bring is lots of Corfam for shoes. The newest and one of the greatest results of chemical research. In a nutshell, we're going to have shoes like we've never had shoes before. Right? Right. Everyone's saying, what's that? Everyone knows, what's that? Music they're playing, where's that? Everyone goes down each street, the neatest speed are wearing cork and shoes. Small or tall, the smartest tall, have learned the latest news. See that vision of fashion, note that flattering flair. Get that powerful passion, come along, you'll walk on air. What's that beautiful pleasure no one wants to lose? It's that pleasure you treasure when you wear cork and shoes. You can do what you please and yet wear them with ease, for they have the happy knack of breathing. Every pair is so rare with your minimum pair and a shape that they will all retain. Though you know that the rest will be looked and depressed and as fretful as a baby teething. In the beauty of slavery, no longer afraid, even in the middle of a rain. For the next 12 minutes through these doors in the red room, we'd like to show you some molecular marvels even more amazing than the Hindu rope trick. You know, that's a nylon rope. <laughs> Before we go, I'd like to say that this has been a six frog production. Oh, my. Well, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mark McCrary. On behalf of our company, Brent Hickman, Ted Sprague, Pat Stevens, and Joyce Murray, we'd like to thank you for being a wonderful audience. Better things for better living through chemistry for the finer world we want. We can't stay nonchalant. Better things for better living are coming still. That's the promise of you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the wonderful world of chemistry. Good evening, everyone. My name is Dick Krischer. On my right is David Doucette, and on my left, Hal Holden. And the gentleman in the quiet coveralls is Stan Warno, who prepares the chemicals and makes this whole thing possible. All set, Stan? Thank you. For the next few minutes, 
we'd like to show you some of the magical things that chemistry has learned to do with molecules. Now, everything you will see will involve things that never existed before the chemist created them for us in the laboratory. Safety glasses, please, gentlemen. Now, to fill the need for a cooling substance for use in home refrigerators and air conditioners, chemistry created something known as Freon. In its liquid form, which we have here, it exists at a temperature of 100 degrees below zero. Now, to show you how cold that is, this carnation, David, would you ripple the pedal for us? When dipped into Freon, is instantly frozen solid. Now, if anybody doesn't behave, we'll dip them into the free arm. <laughs> into this extreme cold, we'll now place another man-made product. Now, here you see a ball of adiprene and a ball of ordinary rubber. We'll put both kinds into the free arm and see what happens to them. But while they're freezing, let's have a look at some molecules that are quite emotional. They're like us. When calm, they are clear. But when agitated, they turn blue. Now, it takes them a little longer to calm down than it did to become worked up. But if you watch, you'll see that when things are quiet and they are once more at rest, everything clears up again just as it does with us. Now, let's get back to our alloprene and nut. David, let's not annoy the molecules. Let's get back to our adiprene and natural rubber at one, at 100 degrees below zero. We're going to drop a heavy weight on each kind and see what happens to them. First, the adiprene. Frozen solid. Adiprene remains efficient, just as it does on rocket ships and in the Arctic. But what about ordinary rubber at the same temperature? It may never bounce again. <laughs> you know, most important scientific discoveries occur in tiny test tubes rather than in giant complexes like our special glassware by Corning. And one of those discoveries was the creation of nylon, which, as someone once said, changed the lives of all of us and the legs of half of us. <laughs> and we're going to make nylon for you right now in this glass. Now, one of these liquids contains one kind of molecule and the other another. Now, if we pour carefully, where the two meet, a new kind of molecule will be formed, which is nylon. And there it is. It took seven years of research to give us nylon, but this method produces it in less than a second. Now, simple though it may appear, nylon is one of the most revolutionary inventions ever created. Thank you very much, David. Now, one of DuPont's newest creations is... David, that's enough. He keeps thinking he's going to pull a leg out of that glass one of these days. Now, one of DuPont's newest creations is Lycra. It has a memory, and when stretched, snaps back to its original form. There's no rubber in Lycra. It's all fiber. Lycra is used in comfortable stretch fabrics, some of which can snap us back to our original forms, too, if you know what I mean, ladies. <laughs> and this, on the other hand, is Dacron, whose molecules change and stay changed when stretched. Stretching makes Dacron permanently fluffy. And it's used in things like pillows and comforters. Guess who? <laughs> now, in addition to fibers, DuPont also creates dyes to color them. Now, here we have an all-white cloth. We're going to place it into a special dye bath for a moment, and I think you might be a little bit surprised by the result. We're leaving one corner of the cloth white, so you'll be sure it's the same cloth when it comes out again. And now we're rinsing it in some clear water, and then a final rinse in more clear water. <laughs> we'll wring it out and see what we have. There. <laughs> Our vat 
contains four different dyes, and our cloth is woven of four different fibers. Each fiber accepts only one of the dyes mixed together in the solution. Now, we began our demonstrations at a temperature of 100 degrees below zero. But now, let's examine our mastery of something very, very hot. In our furnace, we have placed a piece of TD nickel, which we have heated to the temperature of 1,800 degrees Fahrenheit. This new alloy will be used in jet engines hotter than even 2,000 degrees. But I'm going to hold it now in my bare hand, protected only by a thin sheet of typrosu, the most unusual insulating material, only one-eighth of an inch thick. Typrosu is just one more example of man-made molecules that nature didn't get around to. Now watch what this heat does to an ordinary piece of wood. Barbecue, anyone? Cyberzool is used in everything from ovens in the home to rocket ships in outer space. And speaking of outer space, above the doors on both sides of our stage are models of the Echo satellites now circling the Earth, each in reality taller than a 12-story building. Now, both our models and the satellites are made of DuPont's extremely thin but extremely strong mylar. Echo 1 and 2 have traveled a distance of over 1 billion miles bombarded constantly by space dust and meteorites. And yet their mylar covering is actually thinner than the cellophane on a pack of cigarettes. How's that? And now, we're going to get ourselves into a glorious mess. David E. Wall set up. Good. How do you... Oh, we'll wait. Incidentally, part of each cloth has been treated with a stain-resistant, water-repellent molecule called Z-Pel. And part has not. Now, see if you can tell which is which with some simulated stains. We're going to begin with some coffee. A little bit of orange juice. Some ink. Some gravy. And then we'll wash it all down with some water and see what we have. And there you are. Pretty messy, huh? It's what? really know how to hurt a guy, don't you have? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> For stainless style, the z molecule resists them all, and it's in the fiber to stay. <laughs> We'd like to show you now some molecules that have been trained to change color on command. Now, we're, <laughs> we're going to begin with a very dark blue, and we can take that color completely out. That's better. And then we can change it to something else, and change it again. Or we can even go right back where we started, dark blue. Very nice. Flawlessly done. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. And even more surprising are molecules that have been taught to tell time. We're going to mix together two clear liquids. And a few seconds later, you're going to see something so startling you can almost hear it happen. Now, don't take your attention away, not for a single instant. First, on my right. And don't even blink on this one, it'll pass right by. And now, on my left. when at rest, as it is now, it is a solid, as you can see. But when in motion, the bay mal becomes a liquid. Now let me shake it, and perhaps you can hear it. And there you can actually see it moving back and forth in the tube as a liquid. But when the bay mal is once again at rest, it goes right back to its solid state again. And this principle is used in lucite paint. David, should you please dip your brush? Now, you'll notice that the paint doesn't drip because, like the bay in the tube, it's in its solid state. But when one paints with leucite paint, 
the motion of the brush turns it into an easy flowing liquid. Now this is a piece of leucite plastic bent into a pretzel shape. And it has the unusual ability to conduct light. I'm going to take this small flashlight and direct a beam of light right here. And you'll notice the light travels all the way through the rod and comes out the other end again. Now there you can see the light passing through the leucite rod. And there it is coming out at the other end. Now embedded into the walls all around us are the ends of nearly 200,000 small leucite rods like this. We're going to conduct light through them right now to show you three separate effects. First, contrails. Second, a fire fall. First in multicolor, then all green, and finally, all blue. Third, some famous DuPont trade names. See how many you can recognize. And now, we'd like to show you something on which research is still being done. Now, everything you have seen so far represents products already created by the chemist to bring us better things for better living. But research never stops. And now science is investigating the phenomenon of chemiluminescence in a search for a way to produce light without heat. Incidentally, this is something that fireflies have known how to do for thousands of years. And now at last, we can do it too. Here we have two liquids. When mixed together, their molecules become so excited that they glow. Ladies and gentlemen, chemiluminescence. Ladies and gentlemen, in the hope that your lives may stay as bright and as colorful as chemiluminescence, all of us want to thank you for having spent part of your World's Fair time with E.I. DuPont Dinamours and Company. Thank you very, very much.